the scalpel. Are you looking at me, Dwight? We're losing adrenaline now. Even up in heaven, the postman's sack is every bit as bulging as anywhere else you could imagine. And we've got two particularly fine letters this week. One from Andrew Thompson from Islington, who says, Dear Dominic, I completed Donkey Kong Country on my second attempt. Is this a record? Well, no, Andrew. The second coming by the Stone Roses is a record. This is merely an above-average games-playing feat. Second letter is from David Wells up in Glasgow. Dear Dominic, I bought a new Sony PlayStation, but it doesn't work. When I switch it on, instead of playing fantastic 32-bit software, it simply starts to smell and moan about life not being as good as the old days. See, what you've done there, David, you've actually bought an old-age pensioner by mistake. Not to worry, if you take it back to the shop, I'm sure they'll exchange it, as long as you have that all-important receipt. All right, mate? Coming up on today's show, Phil Babb and Graham Lasso in the second round of our footy tournament. But first, we have matters more intellectual in our event, which we like to call Three's a Crowd. This event is only for those with nerves of steel. The game I've chosen is Puzzle Bubble a charming Neo-Geo game in which players have to destroy the advancing bubbles before they're squashed into oblivion. The beastly bubbles can only be dispatched in groups of three or more of the same colour. So it's only by shooting the right colour bubble in an existing group that their onslaught can be stopped. To make matters even worse, I decided to inflict three simultaneous games on our hapless contestant. Only by ridding all three screens of their bubbles before they make contact with the ground will they earn the golden joystick. It's one of my toughest challenges ever. <laughs> Good luck. And here to attempt what is probably the trickiest challenge we've ever had on this piece of quality television, please welcome Block with top name, Damon Champ. <laughs> Now, Damon, a uh, fantastically tough challenge. This, I reckon, you need to be quite fit. Do you do you exercise at all? Yeah, I try to exercise about three times a week at least. What kind of exercise is um, that? Regular exercise, like push-ups, sit-ups. Um, uh -huh. You pump iron at all? I've done a bit of weightlifting in the past, so I still do it from time to time. Quite a smart bloke. Yeah, I dress casually when I go out sometimes. I should meant intelligence, but that's a very fine answer, though, yeah. Damon. That's <laughs> good. That's a letter thinking. Right. Well, listen, Damon. Uh, while uh, while you get ready to play, we'll take a look at this week's news. Blokes and ladies who wear Star Trek t-shirts are beside themselves with joy this week as the sci-fi cable channel comes on air. Devoted entirely to science fiction and fantasy, the channel offers films, TV shows, factual programmes and cartoons, their modern state-of-the-art movies as well as some vintage black and white material, proving you don't need multi-million pound special effects to make something which saddles will attend conventions about 400 years from now wearing open-toed sandals. Virtua Cop 2, the long-awaited sequel to the arcade classic, quite literally ran along to an arcade show this month and said, all right guys, the standard Virtua Cop style remains with a real club bad guy day out frenzy. There's also new features, including a subway train shootout. You can even relive those happy Paisley days with top car chase shooting action. People everywhere can expect to gather around this cabinet sometime next year. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Japan, the We Love Toshinden But We're Bored With The Graphics Gang are rejoicing over the free CD that comes with the Ultimate Fighting Guide tipbook. It contains a patch for the game, providing a choice of different outfits and even giving rather large heads to the characters. Whatever next. <laughs> Top tough challenge type situation then, Damon Champ has got to clear three screens of Puzzle Bobble, normally that wouldn't be a problem for him, but he has to play these three all at the same time. Best of luck Damon, off you go. 
So off goes Damon onto screen one. Now you can see he's firing the different colour balls there. He's got to get three of them basically to match. There's uh, oh, three yellows there. He's got them to spin. He's going to go for now three greens. That was good. And also the ones below the ones that disappear, they will fall down as well. On the screen two, that's three blues just gone. Left that a little bit messy. On the screen number three. He's firing the blues. You can of course fire off the walls. That was a fantastic middle column of reds he got rid of there. Left a couple of yellows there. Now that's starting to shake screen one, now that means it's just about to fall down a level. They will all start to fall down when they get to the bottom and the challenge is over. Completely kaput. Didn't get a good run of colours there on screen one. On the screen two. Fired right now, he's got a green now. One more green will be useful, but he's got a yellow, he's got a blue now. Oh, he's not having the run of the colours here, but that's the greens. And that's some reds. Fantastic bit of incisive play from Damon there. On the screen three. He's got a blue, that's two blues in a row, and green, there's no greens handy. Here's a third green though, that will help a bit. Another yellow, that's three more yellows gone, but look at screen one's getting a bit dodgy though, he's getting a hurry up sign, he's only got five seconds, otherwise the ball will fire automatically as well. This only adds to his troubles. It's not bad, bit of tidying up there during game one, on to game two. This is looking a bit more promising, as though once again the colours are going against him. Screen, oh no, look at screen three, Damon, he's having a lot of problems there, that's getting very low indeed. He rushes to it, I said, oh, four reds, and that's going to help him out. Three blues, are going to have three yellows, fantastic play from Damon. Oh, back on the screen one, just in the nick of time there once again. He's got three greens together there. Two reds, got another three greens together. Now we're going to fire that yellow. This is good play from Damon, doing unbelievably well. On the game two, three greens together, that's a red. Unlucky there. Oh, the screen's gone down again as well, but he's got those three middle blues. That should be okay for a little while. Back on the screen three now. Again, the colour's not quite coming for him. There's a yellow, he's got three yellows, but the sides are looking iffy on three. Back to one. One is probably the calmest screen he's got. He may afford to uh, leave this for a little while. After the screen has come down, he wants to get rid of those yellows on the right-hand side if he can. Those reds, beg your pardon, on the right. On the screen two now. He's cleared that bunch of yellows, cleared that bunch of blues. I'd watch screen... Oh no, he's got screen one and screen three. Both looking dodgy just now. He wants another red on screen one. The red isn't coming, though, it's a yellow. And the green, he wants the red quickly. In that right hand side, he's going to get the red. And meanwhile, at least screen two, I've got the screen three. Damn it, look at screen three, looking iffy. Screen one's looking not too bad, actually. But you're getting a hurry up warning, it's going to fire the ball on screen one. He zips back to screen one. It's getting lower and lower. Screen two is not looking too bad. Screen three is getting quite low as well. But he needs to clear some balls off of screen one first. He needs some greens. That'll help a lot. He needs a red as well. He needs a couple of reds. Oh no, screen one's getting low. And so is screen three as well. He's desperately battling against time. He's back on the three. It's unbelievable how he's kept going this long. Screen one's looking bad. Screen two's not quite so bad. He can leave that for a while. But screen one is looking very rough indeed. He's going to fall below the line if he's not careful. He wants a couple of blues now. I can't see how he's going to do it. No, he's gone black. A valiant effort there. But Damon, he's unfortunately not done the challenge. Damon. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to get my breath back for a second there, Damon. You lasted fantastically long there. There was a couple of times it was getting very, very dodgy. Talk us through some of the moist moments for you. Yeah, I know I lost, lost a bit of time on screen one as the balls were adding up. And that made it more difficult for me to get rid of the balls. So I was just concentrating on two and three when I should have been crossing in one. That was, that was where um, you went wrong, you reckon? Yeah. Are you as bathed in sweat as I am? Definitely, yeah. It's a tough challenge. Yeah. Well, you can at least take your sweat home with you, and unfortunately you can't do the same with a golden joystick. As brilliant as you played, because Damon, you haven't ended successfully. But thank you very much for coming on anyway. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Damon Champ! <laughs> so after gorging ourselves on that fine televisual feast, let's clean our palettes now with a piquant review sorbet. <laughs> Fair enough, mate. First up, the best boxing game since my last fight. Victory Boxing on the Saturn. Boxing games traditionally are pretty naff. But Victory Boxing on the Saturn, however, is the virtual fighter of boxing games. It's boxing crossed with a beat-em-up. You can customise your pugilist in height, in weight, in the way he fights. There are five different styles of fighting. And as you progress through the championships, so your trainer teaches you new special moves. It's great, OK? You can get different camera angles. And you can see the fighter's full length, which is also a bonus. But the action in this one is just a little bit slow and clumsy, and it lacks realism for me. I disagree with Dave, actually. I think that sometimes fighting games are a little too fast. With the strategy element, you can actually think about the moves that you're going to take. I actually really like Victory Boxing. It is the thinking man's fighting game.
Next up, the best first person perspective shoot him beat him up since my last fight. Hexen, Heretic 2 on the PC. Whereas Doom was just running around shooting things, Hexen, however, is actually far more complex than that. You have three characters to choose from at the beginning, all with their own individual abilities and weapons. The areas you're in are far more interactive. You can do things like shooting out stained glass windows, and the effects of some of the weapons and spells can only be described as truly evil. The mage has these glowing blue hands that fire huge shards of freezing power at your enemies. There's also the option to play in a cooperative mode as well as in the old Doom Deathmatch. This is a truly huge and awesome Awesome game. And finally, the best baseball game since my last fight, World Series Baseball on the Saturn. It's off the wall. Actual teams, actual stadiums, actual players, and actually, this isn't bad. World Series Baseball on the Saturn is one of the most realistic baseball games I've ever played. On the field of play, every single player has their own individual attributes and statistics. And when you tonk that ball for a home run, there's nothing more satisfying, even winning the lottery. If anybody has sat through a real baseball game, they'll know how long it lasts. It goes on for hours and there's hardly any score. And that could be the problem with World Series Baseball. It's a little bit too realistic. Perhaps they should have put a little bit more fantasy in there, a little bit more action, just to keep the unappreciative British audiences interested. One runner on base. That ball has a chance. Oh, my! A two-run shot to left center. Oh! I'm a bit cream crackered. We're just working out here, not for gratuitous visual thrills. We're just so excited about the second round of the Games Master Football Tournament coming up after the break. Stadium. We're quite literally three minutes, 30 seconds away from kickoff. And if you wish to be pedantic, you can start your stopwatches now to see if I'm lying. The rest of you, though, can recline and see what slice of soccer Arcadia Games Master has in mind. The second round of our football championship will again be played on winning 11. And our players will have two halves to prove which of them is the master of the PlayStation pitch. Right, lads, let's give it 101%. Now, you may remember last week Dean Holdsworth narrowly pipped David Kerslick 1 0 in the first semi final of the annual Games Master Football Tournament. This week we have a clash of the defensive titans for the second semi final. Please welcome Graham Lasso and Phil Babb. <laughs> welcome to the show, Graham. Thank you. Welcome, Phil. Thank you. Okay, right, Graham. There has been a lot of atrocious haircuts in the Premiership so far this season. What's been your particular worst? Uh, the bleached ones. You know, like, <laughs> like, like sort of Robbie Fowler's gases and that. No names, but <laughs> no, you haven't been tempted yourself to go for a lighter. Uh, look? No, I just leave my hair do its own thing. Not even run a comb through it. No. Either. <laughs> no actually, I don't. I don't want to run a comb through. It has to be said. Uh, right, Phil. Now, actually, we actually bumped into each other. Right, a while back, and you did say to me you were the greatest video games player currently playing football. Are you still sticking by that? Uh, I'll, I'll have a good bash at it. Because you did, you said, get me on the show, I am fantastic. Oh, well, so you have to be good, right? You have to be good. Do you reckon you can take them then? Eh, I'd like to think so. And what style of play will we be having from you? Dynamic. <laughs> Okay, I'm contractually obliged at this point, gentlemen, to ask you to follow me up to the challenge area in preparation for play. Come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. PC Reviews, ball boy Rick Henderson is joining me again for the second semi-final. Rick, who are you going to go for? Oh, as a lifelong Reds fan, Liverpool that is, not the Scunners. Uh, it's got to be Phil. Uh, Phil's got to win this one as far as I'm concerned. But if Graham indeed attacks it the same way as he attacks his left, left back slot for England with the same tenacity, it would be an interesting contest, I think. Thank you very much, Rick. That was almost eloquent as well. It was. Okay, best of luck, boys. English. Let's go to kick-off. Okay, Phil Babb is playing in the orange, the team is called Spulse, playing from left to right, and Graham Lasso is playing in the blue, from right to left, this team is called Jubilo. If you remember, last week we saw a very random game there. Oh, there's a goal, Phil! Oh, 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 oh
There's a lovely ball in. The goalkeeper's struggling. And then the guy follows up and slams it in the back of the net. OK. Graham with a lot of work to do. Yeah, Graham's actually got to push it up front. Best thing to do there is actually to pass it around your players. Try and get the ball moving. You're not going to get any positional play with just trying to run through the other players. And that's another speculative ball there. Played into a lot of space. Oh, lovely little back heeled clearance there from Mr. Bab. And he's coming up. That's a crunching tackle crunching from the show. He was coming from left back then, I think you're fine. It certainly was. Right, Bab on the attack. Comes up to the outside of the box. Are we going to see a shot? Oh, there he goes! Oh, straight into the top. Right to the and 2 0 to the Bab star. And here's the replay again. We see him coming to the edge of the box and he just lets rip there. Get in there. That was superb. Eat my goal. <laughs> okay, now listen, how is Graham Masso going to come back from this, Rick? He's got to get that ball moving around. I mean, Phil's just walking past his players. Try not to, not, not to rely on the defenders so much, I think, is the idea there, because they're, they're not stopping anything. Okay, once more, it's Phil Bab on the attack. Oh, no, but it's like another great tackle from the defence. Yeah, it's a coming long ball in. Up. Phil's defence is rock solid. Now, that's a speculative ball if ever I've seen one. But I think Phil's going to be the first player to get to this, and the keeper's oh. not gone for it. A Take rare off. lapse in Phil's striking abilities. And that was very... Uh, what you might call an opportunity missed. It certainly was. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's Phil Bab skips over the first tackle. Oh, Whoa. skips over the second. Oh, oh, it's a route. It's a route. <laughs> That's what it is. And here's the replay again. Just look Run at this. Behind. Oh, a little and skip. And in. Oh, and another one. Oh, you know, it's looking like curtains. Coming to the end of the first half there. Maybe Graham can snatch one back, but it's Phil still on the ball. And he's keeping possession very well, Rick. He's, he's just skipping over every chunk. Oh, apart from that one. That's it. They've cleared up one final effort before the whistle blows. Maybe. No, that's it. It's half time. And the score at the moment. Phil Bab 3. Graham is on nil. OK, let's kick off the second half and rejoin the action. Now the players are swapped round, the Graham still in the blueprint from left to right now and he's dribbling it up from defence, not wise, but it's working, that's another, that's a, that's a dangerous ball there, but the defence cuts it out. Maybe that's a way that Graham can get back in the match, you can see that Phil's midfield is definitely not strong. That's true, but his centre-back pairing are not yeah. missing a trick. Oh, that was a terrible foul, but the referee's chosen to miss it. Referees are very lenient in this game, they, they won't give a card for anything. And that's, oh, that was a fine shot there from Graham Lasso, but I don't think anything's going to get past the Babs goalkeeper today. No, I think uh, Graham's going to be speculatively peppering that goal with as many shots as possible, but none of them will go in now. Phil Babs quite content to sit back, soak up the pressure, hit him on the counter-attack. As he's doing that, this is a fantastic, amazing oh, run. what a run. He's in the box oh, the that was very Stan Collymore. Oh, but it certainly was. Here he comes, we'll see it again. Talk us through this, Rick. Right? Well, he just... We, we joined it a bit too late. He went round about three or four players and just chunked it straight Still had the, the energy left to let that rocket rip. 4-0 now, no, and I think Grimace was playing for pride now. Yeah, I think he must be. He just wants a goal here. He just wants a goal to gain a little bit of respect from his teammates. What can he pull out here? There's not a great deal of time left. He's going route one, he's going to go straight down the park. Maybe he's going to try another mazy little run. It could be in that is nice. left a lot of feeble effort there. Yeah, he should have tried for the near post there. OK, a weak throw out, there's only a matter of seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second left, this could be a Graham's final chance, we're into injury time now, the goalkeeper's going to be in no hurry to kick this out. Oh, he's just holding on to it. Kicks Very it cheeky. far into the Lasso half now, could it but be now, for another maybe goal you'll get Phil one Bam. more just at the end. Ah, oh, he's wound well, round one, the way, the round another. Is no, 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 no! Oh, as the referee blows his whistle, with the final score being Phil Bab 4, Graham Lasso 0. Hello, Phil. Hello, Graham. Right, uh, Phil, we'll start with you. What can I say? Absolutely magnificent. What was the secret of your success? A uh, bit of coaching from Robbie Fowler and Stan Collymore this morning, yep. and uh, put my shooting boots on and it seemed to work. But it didn't, <coughs> they didn't uh, kind of influence you to change your hair at all? No. no. You're not going to follow suit with them? No, no, that's probably a good thing. Graham, when was the last time you suffered a 4 0 defeat? It's been ages um, and ages Yeah, ago. it's been, been a little while. So what went wrong? I think someone was fiddling with my joystick. I'm sure, well, uh, enough about that. It's, uh, <laughs> we don't want to get the tabloids involved in anything, so we don't want to bring the game into disrepute. And we certainly don't want to be on right to reply again because we're a little bit bored of that having happened to us. Thanks so much for coming along anyway, Graham. It's a pity you couldn't make it to the final, but there is a place in my Sunday league team this Sunday, if you are free. See what I can do. Uh, well, we'll have to test you out first, obviously. Oh, you can't just walk straight On that performance, I think I'm going to struggle. <laughs> <laughs> and Phil, we'll see you next week in the grand final. OK. All right, yeah. thanks so much. Phil, Bob, Graham, Lasso. 
Now, as nice as heaven is, at times it can be duller than a very dull thing. That's why once a week I like to get out and about in a fantastic feature. The Waterworld Show, which opened last week in Universal Studios, California, is the most complex live action show ever, with tourists quite literally watching it by the busload. Right, today I am at the biggest, newest attraction in the world of amusement. This is the Waterworld attraction at Universal Studios in California. And uh, don't tell my mum no, because she thinks I've just nipped out for a pint of milk. As always, thousands of hangers-on followed my every move, so I hid inside this green box until the show began. The future, the polar ice caps have melted, and the continents are deep beneath the waves in this place called the Waterworld. Features Hero Brought Mariner having a set to with Bad Bloke Deacon, accompanied by spectacular action sequences that make Home and Away look like a bad Australian soap. Split second timing is required to coordinate the eight stunt people and hundreds of special effects involved. It's all controlled by computers, of course, and I went off to find project manager Man Norm to see how it's done. Right, I'm in the actual Waterworld control room with Norm, project manager. Uh, Norm, tell us a bit about some of the equipment that you're using for the ride. Well, what we have right here is our uh, main operator control console, and this is our main show computer that evaluates all of the safety systems and sensors that we use to run the show. We have a video surveillance system, and that allows us to see people underwater. Uh, that's our jet ski launcher. That's another underwater shot. Is it possible for anything to go wrong, then, with... Uh with this? Well, with every show, you have the human element. You've yeah. got eight actors out there, you've got a stage crew of about ten people. So, more often than not, it's a, it's a factor of somebody not being on their button or an actor not being in the right spot, and the effect may not go. And uh, out of all of the things that, that go on, what's technically the most difficult thing to pull off? What's the thing you're proudest of? Well, the thing that's uh, technically most challenging in this show is launching our seaplane. It's a free-flying piece of metal that comes crashing through the wall and lands right in front of the audience. So that, is there any chance it could hit kind of bald Scottish blokes with glasses if they're sitting there? <laughs> is it totally safe? No, actually it's totally safe. <laughs> what will happen, the worst thing that will happen is it won't go. So you see the, uh, the cameras there so you can see it underwater and everything. That's right. You know how like in swimming pools they don't like it if you wee in the water? Yes, yes. Do you ever catch out any of the stunt guys? Well, no, we don't them? catch them on camera, but we've talked about putting that dye in the water. Oh, the that turns stuff. red all the way around, <laughs> but we haven't gone that far yet. Well, my fans were certainly moist from the experience, even if the actors weren't. Waterworld is by far the biggest entertainment spectacle to hit Los Angeles since the O.J. Simpson trial, only slightly more realistic. With blokes on fire, blokes fighting, and blokes generally falling out all over the place, Waterworld makes living in Paisley look like Toy Town. Just don't fly there in economy class. That's it for today. Don't forget, next week, Dean Holdsworth taking on Phil Babb, footballing it up the way God intended on Virtuous Striker in our grand final. Remember, between now and then, kids, life is like a sofa. It's great until some fat bloke sits on you. Bye-bye. I hate this place. <laughs> oh, no.